The film is set in the year 2092. The Earth is being polluted, uninhabitable. Surviving humans explore new horizons in space. A company called UTS builds a new orbital home for humanity, but it restricts access to a handful of elites. The remaining of the population then endures breathing through the polluted air on Earth. Most of them survive as space sweepers, hovering around space to make a living by collecting the debris from disposed satellites and spacecrafts. Kim Tae Ho, a crew member of the ship Victory, rustles into an office to trade a bag of rice for them. However, they send him away and end up taking his pair of magnetic shoes. In return, a UTS guard directs him toward a morgue, hoping to locate his lost adopted daughter, Suni. Despite that, his attempt fails as the recovered body was not Suni's body. Meanwhile, reporters from across the globe are invited to meet the founder of UTS Corporation, James Sullivan. He is known as the wealthiest and oldest man in the world at 152 years old. Sullivan shows himself to the reporters in an artificially youthful physique. He talks about his vision of cultivating life on Mars using the tree of life called the super plant. The reporters appear dismayed amidst the promising notions of Sullivan. One of them raises the point that his plans are only available for the rich and superior, neglecting the rest of the population. Sullivan doesn't deny it and tells the reporter that they will further talk about this next time. On a solar battery charging area in space, crews of space sweepers hasten to collect a large space debris. While the other space sweepers are in pursuit of the junk, another crew of space sweepers from the ship Victory approaches the area. This ship is managed by four members named Kim Tae Ho, Bubs, Tiger Park, and commanded by Captain Jang. For a long time, the crew has proven their skills in collecting space junks, gaining the reputation as one of the best among the League of Space Sweepers. The other space sweepers become wary of their arrival. Kim Tae Ho, the ship's chief pilot, was a former intellectual commander in the UTS Armed Forces. Bubs, a droid, serves as the Victory's maintenance worker. Tiger, a former drug dealer, assumes the role of the ship's mechanical engineer. And Captain Jang, Victory's leader, was a former child genius and special forces officer who escaped from UTS Corporation. Upon inspecting the current situation, Captain Jang casually orders Taeho to pick up speed. Bubs sets the aim before skillfully hooking a harpoon to the space junk which attaches it to their ship. In an instant, the Victory snatches away the space debris and escapes from the other crews. The other crews chase the Victory while expressing annoyance at their cunning and reckless behavior. From the other side of the ship, Captain Jang co-pilots as soon as Tiger manually boosts their engine. The other space sweepers stop chasing them as the crew advances towards a large solar panel steering the ship with ease. The crew heads toward the waste management satellite to sell their collections. They earn considerable cash, but the cash is used to pay off their heavy debts and taxes, barely getting any money to support themselves. In addition, the UTS cashier refuses to take the space debris they caught because the satellite building's garage is already full. During their transaction, breaking news from the UTS Corporation reports about Dorothy a child-shaped android which has gone missing. Dorothy is described as a weapon of mass destruction and is allegedly stolen by a group called Black Foxes. Later, the crew kills their time and hunger while playing a card game. In the middle of their game, Tiger informs everyone that some of their supplies are missing, particularly their toolbox, battery, and a bag of rice. He suspects that someone has been stealing from their ship as he subtly confronts them. Taeho, who is guilty of the suspicion, warily stays quiet while Tiger questions Captain Jang. The habitually drunk Captain Jang shuts him off and urges Tiger to continue their game. As the discussion between the two gets heated, Bubs interferes to remind them about the upcoming deadline of their loans. Taeho is swamped by Bubs' constant reminders and tells the droid to stop. Their growing distress in their conflicts lead to a sudden brawl inside the victory. Captain Jang, Taeho, and Tiger all pass out on the ship's floor as Bub sighs in disbelief after seeing the zero balance in their savings account. 
After a while, Bubs and Tiger hang around in space to do a checkup on the ship's condition. As Tiger floats around in a spacesuit, Bubs sits on the top of the ship and looks at skin grafting procedures in hopes of transitioning to a female. They notice a movement coming from the large space junk that they caught earlier. Teho arrives to check along with Tiger and Bubs. They find the reported missing child, Dorothy, inside the space debris, which turns out to be a cargo ship. The four become skeptical and unsure of what to do with the child. Teho and Dorothy share a look, reminding him of his adopted daughter before he walks away. Suddenly, the ship software notifies them of the news about Dorothy. The members of the crew see the news as they nervously duck and cover for protection, thinking that Dorothy is about to self-destruct. Instead, the child sneezes and innocently follows their pose. They run away from Dorothy as soon as she approaches them and lock themselves in a room. Out of fright, the four decide to tie Dorothy outside the ship, but their attempt fails. Tiger also calls the police in an attempt to notify them about Dorothy. Teho later discovers a phone in Dorothy's bag containing several missed calls from someone named Kang Haiyan Yu. At the same time, Dorothy wanders around the ship out of cluelessness and boredom. She encounters a withering plant when suddenly, a leaf grows out from it through her nanotechnology powers. The crew gathers in a tavern to talk about Dorothy. They learn that both the Space Guards and Black Fox are looking for her everywhere. Knowing that they won't get any money from the police, Teho proposes to sell Dorothy to the Black Foxes for money. Captain Jang expresses her reluctance to the idea, but Teho insists on pushing through the deal, convincing the rest of the crew. The four space sweepers get into an argument on how to divide the money, but eventually settle it. Back in the victory, the crew continues to keep their distance from the child. They monitor her through their cameras and find her drawing on the wall of Tiger's room. Shortly after, the crew explores Dorothy's handphone and succeeds in contacting Kang Hyun Yu, who they believe is from Black Fox. The two parties then agree to meet at a nightclub as the crew cheers in excitement, thinking of the money. Tiger comes back to his room with Dorothy still inside. Dorothy shows Tiger her drawing of him and the two slowly grow closer. Meanwhile, Teho and Tiger prepare to meet with Kang Hyun Yu but a police officer suddenly arrives on the victory. The officer looks around and chatters about their illegal modifications on the ship. They all notice that the plant in the spaceship is fully alive and has been continuously growing. The police officer asks about Tiger's call to confirm their report, but they all remain silent. The officer catches Tiger's gestures towards Dorothy, who is hiding in another room. He enters the room suspiciously and inspects the area. Just when he is about to discover Dorothy, Captain Jang and the rest of the crew corner him. They blackmail the officer and accuse him of taking bribes, forcing him to leave the victory in order to stop him from reporting to UTS. After he leaves the ship, Dorothy steps out and gives Captain Jang a thumbs up. Inside the nightclub, Teho and Tiger arrive carrying Dorothy in a bag. Tiger displays his growing attachment to the child, asking Teho about what will happen to Dorothy after the deal. Teho convinces him that Dorothy is not a child and that he doesn't need to worry. They finally meet with Kang Hyun Yu, who is a doctor specializing in nanomedicine. The two parties trade $2 million for the child. However, Dr. Kang finds the bag empty as Dorothy has wandered off the dance floor. Captain Jang instructs the crew to find Dorothy immediately before anyone recognizes her. Meanwhile, Dorothy approaches a tall pillar of electricity, curiously looking at it. The partygoers slowly recognize her as the music in the club dies down. They all stare at Dorothy in fear, and soon hidden UTS soldiers begin a shootout in the club. Dr. Kang addresses Dorothy as her Korean name, Kat Nim, while calling out to her. Teho and Tiger successfully find Dorothy and are about to escape from the club when a UTS soldier spots them. The soldier shoots toward them, but Dorothy suddenly creates a protective shield around them. Captain Jang is astonished, witnessing the situation through her remote access from the ship. As soon as they come back to the victory, they display their frustration at the failed trade. The entire crew learns that Dorothy's real name is Kat Nim. 
The rest of the crew becomes more friendly with her, but Teho stays away, still thinking that Kot Nim is dangerous. The crew goes back to the maintenance hangar to repair their engine. Kot Nim knocks at Teho's room to borrow his scissors, but Teho dismisses her. The young girl is about to leave his room, but Teho changes his mind and gives her the scissors. Together, they cut the tomatoes that had grown from the plant inside the ship and sell to other space sweepers in the maintenance hangar. Later, Bubs and Kotnam spend time together through a makeup session, and Bub tells her the story about Teho and Teho's adopted daughter, Suni. Kotnam learns that Teho used to serve as a UTS child soldier. A while back, he raided a ship carrying a number of fleeing non citizens, known as those who were outside the UTS orbiting home. Teho found a human baby in the ship and decided to adopt her amidst the opposing rules of UTS. His deep attachment to his adopted daughter, Suni, prevented him from hurting any more humans. This resulted in his dismissal as a space guard and banishment from the UTS orbit home. A year later, Suni was separated from him during a space debris collision. She can only be located with the help of UTS services, but in a costly amount. At this moment, the crew receives Dr. Kang's call and sets another meetup to make the deal. Bubs and Teho look forward to receiving the money, and they continue with the trade amidst Tiger's suggestion in keeping Kot Nim. Captain Jang checks the papers in Kot Nim's backpack and reads through them while drinking. While Kot Nim walks her way to the toilet inside the maintenance hangar, a masked man follows and takes her away. Teho and Tiger manage to save Kot Nim, but are soon cornered by a group of masked people. Tiger skillfully defeats them all and they discover that the masked people are their fellow space debris collectors, led by Karim. Back in their lounge, the crew confronts the space debris collectors. After reading the files in Kot Nim's backpack, Captain Jang reveals that Kang Kot Nim is a human child who is the daughter of a nanorobotic scientist named Kang Hyun Yu. She also announces that the space debris collectors are members of Black Fox, which startles them. Karim explains that the Black Fox is not a terrorist group, but an environmental organization. At the same time, Sullivan summons the reporter he met during his press conference and they resume their conversation. The reporter seeks to know his intentions for sucking out money and valuable human resources from Earth. He accuses Sullivan for further accelerating the planet's death. However, Sullivan tells him about his previous experiences on Earth and blames the people, saying that he vows to make a better world by selecting only the most upstanding citizens. Sullivan stuns a member of the Black Foxes in front of the reporter and challenges him to kill the man in exchange for being a UTS citizen. Amidst the pressure, the reporter nervously shoots the man. Sullivan makes him realize that his action has shown his true nature of being hateful and greedy and thus kills the man. Back in the hangar, Karim points out that Earth can still return to its habitable state. Being born with a congenital disease, Kotnim's father, Dr. Kang, injected her body with nanobots to save her life. The nanobots did not only repair her nerves, but also gifted her with the power to bring dead plants back to life. This serves as a possibility to bring life back to Earth. However, Sullivan is also in pursuit of Kotnim for his development project in Mars. The space guards soon arrive at the hangar and begin their search for Kot Nim. The newly formed team splits up as Tiger, Captain Jang, and Bubs leave with Karim and the Black Foxes. Teho escapes with Kot Nim through the air vents, but a space guard discovers them. The space guards soon track their ship and shoot towards victory, while another shoots at Teho's location. After much struggle, Kot Nim and the crew make it in time to escape the hangar. The space guards continue to chase them in space as Teho quickly takes over to pilot the ship. They land an attack that hits Victory's engine, causing them to crash towards the Lagrangian point, a cosmic cloud full of deadly nanobots. The ship enters the deadly cloud, and the nanobots quickly penetrate their ship. Captain Jang soothes Scott Nim by making her close her eyes while the crew brace themselves for the impact. The entire ship is covered by nanobots, but it all dissipates as soon as Kot Nim opens her eyes. The Victory ship successfully passes through the Lagrangian point with the help of Kot Nim's power. Kot Nim faints from exhaustion, 
causing the crew to panic and immediately attend to her aid. Kotnim soon wakes up. With a sense of relief, they all laugh at each other. Teho catches Kotnim inside his room and asks her why she hasn't drawn him yet. Kotnim answers, saying that she has already drawn him but was afraid to show it to him. The child approaches Teho with her sketch pad, where he finally sees his drawing. The two talk about Suni as Kotnim invites Teho to see Suni together someday. Kotnim manages to comfort Teho before going to Tiger. Tiger washes her hair in preparation to meet Dr. Kang. Shortly, the victory arrives at the meeting place with Dr. Kang. Karam calls to confirm their location, and together the crew and the Black Foxes meet Dr. Kang to get Kotnim. Just then, the UTS forces surround them with the orders of Sullivan. They cut off the electricity in the area, shutting off Bubs and their engines. The Space Guards organize an ambush and kidnap Dorothy before eliminating Dr. Kang, Karam, and the rest of the Black Foxes. Sullivan offers to double the money of the previous deal with Dr. Kang in exchange for abandoning Kotnim. Sullivan leaves, and Teho decides to accept the money. The rest of the crew refuse to take the money and decide to save Kotnim. Teho then surrenders the entire amount to pay for the UTS services, where he is given Suni's belongings. He finds Suni's writing notebook and reads her note. In the notebook, she has also written that she wanted to be a good person like him. Teho is brought to tears and is reminded of his mistakes. He ultimately decides to take the money back and goes back to the ship to help the crew in saving Kotnim. They make quick repairs and modifications on the Victory before heading to Kotnim's location. Meanwhile, Sullivan informs the UTS citizens about the beginning of a new world on Mars. He plans to completely abandon the Earth and make Mars the remaining habitable planet. In order to do so, Sullivan ties Kotnim to a hydrogen bomb. This creates a massive impact that will not only kill her but also destroy the Earth as a whole. A battle ensues as the ship heads to the UTS factory and encounters the UTS missiles. Captain Jang and Bubs clear out the missiles while Teho and Tiger navigate the ship. The crew reaches the factory and successfully detaches Kotnim from the bomb. Captain Jang finds out that the bomb can no longer be defused and that Kotnim must be taken out of range in order for her nanobots to remain functional. The crew is disheartened upon hearing the news, but Teho refuses to give up as they decide to fly the required distance of 5,000 kilometers. On their way, an elite space guard appears to stop them from leaving. Tiger decides to fight the space guard alone, but she overpowers him. He succeeds at ejecting the space guard from the ship, and they hurriedly set off to fly. Captain Jang delivers a message to the rest of the space sweepers, encouraging them to help fight the UTS attackers for the sake of their survival. The victory accelerates, flying as fast and as far as they can to achieve the required distance. Meanwhile, a recorded message of Sullivan's real plans and intentions reach both the humans on Earth and the UTS citizens, which shocks them. Sullivan himself finally appears to intercept the victory using his own ship. He continuously pressures the victory to surrender Kotnim to him, injuring Captain Jang and Bubs in the process. Teho and Tiger resort to their final defense, which is to activate the emergency booster of the ship. Captain Jang climbs from outside the ship to activate the booster before the ship dashes further to space. They momentarily escape from Sullivan's ship and succeed at reaching the 5,000 kilometer distance for Kotnim. It is later revealed that the crew did not bring Kotnim with them, knowing that Sullivan will come for her. Instead, they carried the bomb along with them and flew the required distance to keep Kotnim safe while she is with the other space sweepers. The members of the Victory bid their farewell messages to each other and take the bomb close to the Sullivan ship. The bomb explodes and the impact kills him. On the other hand, Kotnim manages to save the entire crew as she communicates with the Lagrangian nanobots to shield them. Teho and Tiger gasp in surprise, realizing that they have survived the explosion. They tease each other for being cringy with their farewell messages, but nonetheless celebrate their triumph. 
In the wake of the catastrophe, changes are implemented by the UTS. The corporation also apologizes to the public for concealing their true plans and dedicates themselves to improving the living conditions on Earth. The UTS also facilitates the procedure in searching for Teho's daughter, Suni. Using Cottonam and her nanobots as a medium, Teho is able to reach Suni for the last time. The two reconnect for a short while as Teho finally says goodbye to her. While Bubs, the reliable droid of the crew, successfully affords a skin graft procedure, identifying herself as a female. The movie ends with the victory members sharing a meal with Kot Nim, who they fully adopt as a member of their family. Kot Nim uses her powers to plant more trees and bring back the habitability on Earth.